Here's a quick preview of what I'm making today. 3, 2, 1, done. So recently, I've been looking into making Android games with Godot. The process ended up very straightforward. Thanks Godot. Until I decided I wanted to have transitions to other scenes, say from the main menu to the level select, swipe in from the side or below instead of just fading to the new scene. Now the obvious solution was to just make the menus next to each other, swipe the camera across and good as. Except different aspect ratios exist. And I didn't want to use stretch to make it fit to any aspect ratio either. I mean it might look weird in some cases, right? So I got to work. I needed to be able to test my results, so first I created a basic main menu scene. It didn't need to be pretty for some quick tests, but it had to look representative enough, so I could tell if my method would work for a real scene later. I played around with the screen stretch settings a bit, and found a stretch mode of 2D with expanding aspect to work fine. To finish up the menu, I added a font to make the text a bit bigger, and a color rect to use as a background. I added my main menu into a grid container in a test scene, and added a few color rects to represent other potential scenes. The grid container, of course, wasn't able to extend past the border of one screen size, at least not automatically, so it was time to make one of my own. I created an empty scene with a root node inheriting from the generic container node. Next, I used an exported columns variable, imitating the grid container, and checked the godot dots to figure out just how to make a custom container in the first place. A quick copy-paste later, and the code has a functional base structure I could use to adjust how children would be scaled. All this really needed was to adjust the input values to the fitChildInRect function, to use a different rectangle for each child based on its index and the number of columns. I also made sure to update the rectangles on screen resize to let me test things out more easily. With the container pretty much done, it was time to test the result. Adding children to the container worked the same as any other node, though the proper positions only work in game right now, not in the editor. A few tests with window resizing, making use of the editor's camera override to make sure everything was aligned, and it actually seems to have worked fine. Nice. At this point the container itself was technically finished, but I still wanted to see the system in action. I added a camera which would use grid coordinates and a tween to move to the proper location. To make sure the camera would update its position to match various screen sizes, I added an autoload script to handle event signals. Now the container could trigger a globally visible signal whenever its scale settings changed, and the camera could read it out to adjust its position and tween. Lastly, I finished up some basic controls to let the camera move horizontally and vertically along the grid. And with that, we are pretty much back to the preview from the start. Hi, I'm Daniel. This multi-screen container ended up a whole lot easier to make than I initially expected, but I think it could be quite useful. As always, you can find a link to the source code in the description in case you want to use this for any of your own projects. This will be all for today. Bye.